Hi, and welcome to the introductory video about vaccination. In this video, we are going to talk about how vaccination developed, what is the concept behind it, and what are the types. So these days, we are pretty much aware of flu vaccine and vaccine of several other diseases. But where does the concept of vaccination come from? So in late 18th century, people are affected by smallpox and it, it became a big pandemic. But at that point of time, it turns out the milkmaids who used to milk the cows, they are pretty much immune to the smallpox and they don't develop scars. And this phenomena was detected by Edward Jenner. But these milkmaids, they have small blister in their hands from cowpox. Now cowpox is not that powerful virus and it don't infect human that much. So they have small blisters in their hand. Now. Edward Jenner thought if you can take out the extract from the postules of these milkmaids who, did, who have developed cowpox and then it can, he can inject that into a person and that person might get immune, right? And he has seen that the milkmaids are mostly not infected by the smallpox. And that's what he did with his gardener's son. And what happened is, after injection, there was no symptoms of smallpox. When this person was infected with the smallpox virus, he is not showing any symptoms of smallpox. That means his immune system has fought back against this particular virus. From that, the initial concept or initial, uh, initial uh, foundation of vaccine was actually formed. Now, vaccination gives us protection from all kind of viral attacks or pathogenic attacks. Let's see how does it work. So vaccines can be roughly divided into two different strategies of immunization, a passive immunization and an active immunization. In case of passive immunization, you use the antibodies which are going to be produced by the body and you readymately supply that. And in case of active immunization, you put or you expose the body to less harmful state of the pathogen, let's say a heat killed or let's say an inactivated virus. Now let's talk about the passive immunization first and then we go to active immunization. In case of passive immunization, what you generally do is against a pathogen, you put the antibodies. So whenever a pathogen is infecting your body, your antigen presenting cells would be active, they would work, but at the time they they would take some time to produce like uh, antibodies. So when the B cells would produce antibody, it would be already pretty much time, right? And then the pathogens would be neutralized. Now, if you readymately supply these antibodies because you know these antibodies are against that particular pathogen, so you would get quick augmentation response. And that's how a passive immunization works. It is antibody mediated. But there is major risk associated with this kind of immunization strategy. Let me tell you how. So let's say you are bitten by a snake and this snake venom is detrimental for you. In order to counter the snake venom, you have injected yourself with antiserum. Now this antiserum has uh, actually antibody against the snake venom, which is raised in either rabbit or in horse. Now if you give this antiserum, it would neutralize the toxin or neutralize the uh, poison and as a result the person would be saved but there is another problem since these anti-serum the antibodies are actually not raised in human human immune system would find it foreign and it would mount a response against those antibodies as a result huge antibody clumps would be produced which would be attracting the attention of other cells such as neutrophils and macrophages as a result these clumps can also block the blood vessels and allow neutrophil to attack the cells of the blood vessels leading to damage or expansion of these capillaries. So type 3 hypersensitive response can be evoked if the dosage is not proper. So passive immunization though it's a temporary remedy but it has a lot of risk associated with it. Now let's talk about active immunization which involves the formation of memory cells. The memory cells 
would have a memory of what pathogen has invaded so they would quickly target those pathogen and know what type of antigen this pathogen has produced so a memory cell would quickly get differentiated into a specific kind of plasma cell which has antibody against that particular pathogen and this response would be very rapid so let's say you have injected the pathogen or in injected this kind of uh, injected this kind of uh, vaccination strategy or the heat kill pathogen then there is a primary immune response and second time when you are really exposed to that kind of pathogen then what happens there is an augmentation of the response and your body reacts faster because already there are memory b cells or memory cells produced inside the body so the memory cell knows which antibody to produce and what isotype to produce so they know from the the plasma cells which are derived from these memory cells they already know that which antibody to produce so the lag between making the antibody to kill the pathogen is very low and this time the response is way more effective that is why you vaccinate let's say your early age and you're still immune to a particular infection in your early 20s let's say that is how a vaccination is so effective in in case of active immunization strategy and let us take a look from 90s to 2000 i mean this years from 19th end of 19th century to 20th century how the smallpox has uh, diminished in many parts of the world after vaccination so that is how vac vaccine work but i haven't discussed about the exact strategies and uh, more detailed ways by which active immunization or passive immunization can work but in other videos i'll be talking about that so till now, if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.